would be. This is a great place. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you gotta hold on to it and make it work. I really want that to happen. My name is Andy. I'm uh, one of the Yes Men, and uh, what we do is uh, find f make find ways to do funny stories that get important things into the media and publicize important struggles. We f basically what we use is the um, press release. We write press releases. Um, we we make funny actions and we try to. Uh, make them so that they communicate important issues um, to the media, in, in the media. They give reporters an excuse to, to talk about important things, like this squat, you know, so f finding a, 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 an action that's funny and stupid and, but is a joke that gives reporters an excuse to write about this squat um, is the kind of thing that we, we would do. Like, um, because if, if reporters write about this and talk about it on TV or whatever, that means that politicians feel pressure. And that means that you have power over the politicians to get them to do what you want. Um, it's, it's basically a way to keep uh, pressure on politicians, which is a, an important part of democracy. My advice would be just you know keep it very nice and simple. Keep it uh, keep it keep it stupid. You know don't don't try to get too complicated with it. It's just a very simple idea. It's a very simple situation. This is a great place. It's good for the community. That's it. That's all you have to communicate. And that's that's what that's what it'll do. You know. That's what, it, that's what this uh, project will do. Another thing we do is use uh, video news releases, uh, which are basically press releases, but they're in video format. So you make uh, you know, a piece of um, video that um, actually looks like news, and it, it kind of can, can be put on the news by the news media. And... Um, And it's um, <laughs> and it, it can be put on the news media as a piece of, of news. So you make it look just like the real news, and it, it um, except saying what you want it to say. Yeah. We write the press releases. Anybody can just mm -hmm. write a press release. Um, you make it look like a news article. You, there's you know ways to write a press release. You just make a news article. Basically, you get the important points in the top paragraph and you put a funny, catchy, good headline on, and you write the rest of the press release, and then you send it to thousands of journalists. And you get those emails um, either from a list that somebody has that they give to you, or you go to the websites of media outlets and you collect the emails. The main thing that you want is an image, like a really good, funny image, or a one-liner, a one-line sentence that's funny. There's other funny things too, like all the, the little publications that'll be passed out to all the neighbors. That's a funny image. People reading it and going, oh, how nice, you know, or whatever. So that's really the key is, is coming up with a one funny picture. We don't lie very long, it's uh -huh. a very short lie. Uh -huh. uh, we lie in order to create the story and then we tell the truth. So we create more truth, we, we reveal more truth. Um, it doesn't actually s keep the story in the media for very long. You know, there's lots of people who write press releases who, um, like big, a lot of corporations or government entities also write press releases um, and never reveal that they're actually not true. You know, that's, that's very common, of course, um, trying to spread misinformation. Um, PR industry, that's its entire purpose, is to spread information that isn't really true, to try to get it into the media. And they never reveal that it's fake. We, we do these things, they're evidently fake, and then after, like, less than an hour, they're revealed to everybody as fake. So, we actually create the revelation of truth. The best case scenario we posed as a Dow Chemical Corporation uh, which is, 
they, they bought the company responsible for the worst industrial disaster in history in Bhopal, India, but they, they bought the company, but they refused to accept the guilt of having caused this disaster. And they refused to uh, uh, compensate the people that had been killed in this disaster. They were never, like, the people have been waiting 27 years to, to be compensated, and it hasn't happened. And uh, we, we found our, a way to, uh, we, we made a fake website, made a fake announcement on behalf of Dow, um, and eventually got invited accidentally onto BBC um, World Television in front of what they said was 350 million people. And as Dow, they thought we were from Dow Chemical, and we made this big announcement that Dow was going to take responsibility, uh, was going, going to liquidate the company they had bought, use the money to pay the survivors, clean up the site, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, it, it was, obviously it was big news, because it was a big embarrassment for the company and for the BBC. Um, and it made people think, well, why isn't Dow doing the right thing? And, you know, what, what's wrong with them using some, some, some of their enormous profits to clean up the, the site? And, of course, the answer was that the market is preventing them from doing that. Um, and we had a demonstration of that when, uh, right after the announcement, the, the stock value of Dow Chemical lost like two billion dollars. Um, <laughs> and it came right back up immediately. But, um, so that was one, an example of that, that kind of approach, where we do the right thing on behalf of a target and, and see what happens. Oh, well, another positive example was uh, in New Orleans, a year after Katrina, we posed as the uh, Department of Housing and Urban Development and got ourselves invited, which is um, it's the, the housing department of the US government. And we found a way to get ourselves invited to a conference on Gulf Coast reconstruction as uh, the, the head of this department. Um, and this department, by the way, is destroying public housing in New Orleans. Um, and we, we found a way to get invited as this department to this conference. And in front of a thousand people, uh, contractors rebuilding New Orleans, um, I was on a, a stage with the mayor of New Orleans and the governor of Louisiana speaking as the department. And I, I said we were going to you know, not destroy the housing. We were going to rebuild some of it. We were going to do a bunch of great things. Um, and it was just a really positive vision. And the people in the uh, audience, these housing contractors that you don't really think of as your friends usually, they loved it. They, they were thrilled because they were going to be given the, all this work rebuilding housing, um, public housing. So that's uh, another example. And the, the other, the negative kind of vision uh, we've done many, many times. We, uh, we posed as, um, once we posed as a, uh, company was it? Oh, it wasn't a company. We posed as the World Trade Organization at a uh, conference on textiles in Finland. And uh, the World Trade Organization, of course, is all about uh, free trade and free labor, you know, just letting companies uh, b do what they want wherever they want, again, whether or not governments want it. And so we proposed, since it was a textiles conference, as the World Trade Organization, we proposed a solution to a big problem uh, facing management of corporations, which is that it's, it's good for the companies to open factories where, in, in poor countries where they don't have to pay people very much, um, but the managers of the companies don't actually want to go there so uh, to, to those, you know, countries that don't have the right kind of toilets and stuff. Um, so we built a special suit um, for these managers. And um, <coughs> Mike and I went to this conference, and we looked normal. We, we were wearing business suits. And at a certain point in, in the talk, Mike came up and just grabbed the front of my suit and pulled it off. And I was revealed wearing a gold lame uh, bodysuit. 
and I pulled a cord and this giant penis inflated in front of my face and I explained that with this the manager of a company could look at the tip of the penis here and see the um, the workers working in the factory in Malaysia and uh, you know not not use his hands and that's the reason for this weird shape it's not a penis of course it's just put there because that's you know where you don't need to use your hands and uh, and you can apply electric shocks to the people working in your factory if they're not working hard enough and uh, and so on and so forth and we had animations to explain it just to make sure they understood what the story was and um, people in the audience just applauded they just you know they thought it was a bit funny but they they didn't see anything wrong with it and they, they certainly didn't see think that it wasn't true so that, that was a, one of many experiences where we've tried to make fun of targets and actually nobody gets it. But the purpose of doing that isn't really to, to wake up your audience. I mean, it is sort of, you, you're thinking like, let's wake up these people and make them see what's wrong here. But really, you're film, we're always filming the reaction of the people who don't react to what we're doing. You know, so we're filming it and we're telling other people there's something wrong here. You know, you can go as the World Trade Organization pr propose this really horrific thing and nobody will notice. And that's a scary world that we live in. Um, so those are the two approaches to answer your question. Just uh, do it, you know? I mean, I mean, you saw in there uh -huh. lots of ideas. You know, so get together with your friends and discuss and come up with funny ideas. That's, that's basically all there is to it. There's really no secret to it. It's just getting together. And lots of people have funny ideas. Lots of people. They're very easy to have. The trick is actually doing them. That's the hard part. And, and there, were, there were some great ideas in there. But now the trick is, will they actually happen? Like, will people actually get together and do them? Put in the hard work to make them happen. Uh-huh. I think... Um, How hard work is it? It's yeah. a very hard work. Uh-huh. Very, yeah. Uh, how many people uh, have to do it? Uh, it like depends on the project. Uh -huh. It's different uh -huh. for each project. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a long uh -huh. story, but you know, uh -huh. it's, it's something you can just figure out as you do it. It's not that hard. You just uh -huh. get the newspaper and you, how do I make it look the same? How do uh -huh. I make it funny? Communicate what I need to. It's something anybody can do. You just have to do it.